That's right, every single week we do the great search with DigiKey. This is where Lady Ada shows you how to use the DigiKey site to get exactly what you're looking for. And this week, our example is this cool speaker. Yes. Okay, so let's go to the overhead and I want to show, sorry, the yeah, computer. Mistake. Um, so this is the speaker that we're using. It. It's like this little square speaker that um, we pick and place onto our PCBs. And there's basically two kinds of speakers that we use in general. We use either piezos or we use magnetic buzzers. And it's confusing. And even to me, it's like sometimes it's hard to tell if something is a buzzer or a piezo. And they're both called buzzers. So one's like a piezo and one's magnetic, but they both beep or buzz. And also within those types, there's ones that are like set tone, like AC input, DC input. It can be like quite confusing. And so uh, I thought I'd show people um, some techniques to get your own. The reason I like to use the magnetic buzzers compared to the piezo buzzers is these piezo buzzers cannot be surface mount pick and placed, right? They're, they're through hole um, soldered onto a PCB. They're very inexpensive. They don't require any extra driving circuitry. You can connect this up to a microcontroller with like a 20 milliamp output and it can like beep nice and loud. However, the piezos really are tuned to just one frequency. Um, they're not, you know, they're usually like a two kilohertz or four kilohertz. You can send them any frequency, but they really, they're really only good to like a certain small range. That's usually between one to like eight kilohertz. Um, and they're shrill. They have a square wave. You know, they're, they're, they're either on or off. There's not a lot of subtlety um, to using a piezo, whereas a magnetic buzzer is actually like a little speaker. And um, you, you can send it uh, sine waves. It will sound a little bit better. Um, and you can send it, you know, uh, waveforms, and you can get slightly different tones. It's not as good as a big speaker or even, like, you know, the ones that you put in your... Um, your, your, your AirPods or your, your earbuds, but it's basically the same idea. They're same as the, the ones that are in um, earbuds or headphones uh, compared to the piezo buzz, which is really meant for like making squeaks. So let's go to DigiKey. And so there's two uh, kind of buzzers, right? You either want to get um, the piezo buzzer. Some people pronounce piezo in different ways and I don't even know what it's like. Piezo or pizzo, I don't know. I call them piezo. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, and so within that, there's a couple things. Basically, there's you can get the raw elements. And what's funny is like you always see these when you open up an, um, a uh, um, multimeter because they're always like kind of or like other device that has a built-in alarm clock. They'll have these, you know, basically like built into the body of the electronics, and then they have um, two contacts. So there's a little piezo discs. When you put an AC current across them, they vibrate. That vibration turns into sound. Um, these are um, extremely inexpensive in quantity, um, easily down to like 10, 15 cents or so. Um, but again, you have to, these are kind of built into the body of the um, device you're building. There's also um, these versions. So that's kind of what I was showing you in the Adafruit shop. They have two pins. The piezo is that flexible disc is inside this plastic piece. There's two pins that come out. They sometimes have wires, sometimes they have mounting tabs, you know, all good stuff. And then um, there's two kinds to watch for, which you can see here. There's single tone that have DC input. Actually, the single tone is a little confusing. I'd say there's, there's DC and there's peak to peak. So if you do DC, it basically means that you give it a um, you give it a voltage and it just makes that tone. You don't have to give it a, a square wave. It just like does its own thing. It's internally driven. And I get this is called like an indicator because you just like basically treat it like an LED. When the, the pin is high, screeching noise comes out of it. Pin is low. It's nice and quiet. Compare that to an externally driven transducer where you have to provide it with an AC signal. That might not be a big deal. I mean, like you're going to usually pay a little bit more for the internally driven indicators because they have an oscillator. Maybe you want to, you know, and then you don't have any control over the pin frequency, like the audio frequency. Whereas externally driven ones, you can, you know, it's a very common thing with an Arduino or my controller. You draw, drive it from a pin or maybe with a transistor buffer 
and you can give it you know a couple of different ranges of, of frequencies so that's that's kind of nice um but again these are hand soldered or bulk or they come with wires i mean they're they can be plenty loud um but they're just fixed in their capabilities so um if you don't want a piezo buzzer the other option you have is a magnetic buzzer here's a question ask the question Can these buzzers only generate square waves for piezos yes you're the only it's really a square i mean if you drive with a triangle wave it won't it doesn't sound like a speaker where you'll actually get a different feel for it or at least no piezo i've had every piezo i've had it's always been like you put you push it with a square wave a sine wave wouldn't do anything to sound different it's it's like the movement back and forth it's like a voltage difference that causes it to to flex but that flexure isn't subtle compared to like a magnetic speaker where you know you can push the air a little bit or more you can you're a little bit more you have a little bit more control although i'll say not a ton it's like these little buzzers they still don't they're not they're not really speakers i mean they are but they're they're very minimal right like you you can play chip tuney sounds or very simple sound effects with them not not good for um listening to really subtle music or lyrical music the lyrics would not come through um okay so next up uh all right so you look for magnetic buzzers um and this is still in that same section they're kind of mixed that's the thing you have to watch out for piezos and magnetic buzzers they end up being in the same same category um so let's go for active and in stock items and then again there's there's the kinds that are externally driven internally driven so we want the externally driven ones because we want to provide you know the sine wave or square wave or whatever wave um and then you know you can get these as like speakers and this is really like a speaker and these are like you know um this was a single tone so let's get ones that are not single tone let's go for continuous and let's go for ones that are rated for like up to five volts or so okay um great now we're talking so yeah so like some of these it looks like a piezo like it has the pins but this is actually a magnetic buzzer so what i'm telling you it's like this is a great confusion but um the speaker that i like is this one so it's you know you can get bigger ones they kind you know you can get ones that are like this actually this is the five millimeters this is the one used on the clue um and then there's a couple different ones that are the um about eight millimeters square so let's actually filter down to get to the ones that are about eight millimeter the problem is there's like diagonal and then they're square but we want you know about seven seven point five um to 8.5 so let's apply okay great so now we're really zoned in so yeah there's there's a couple different mix i will say that these are a little generic nobody owns the idea of having like this square uh speaker so um you can get them you know this one has a, a top port and this one has like a side port this one's like really tall this one has a small photo but it's basically the same idea and um you know you can uh sort by price if you care so let's just say sort by 500 and then so you know under a dollar what's nice about these i'll tell you the thing i really like about these first off they're nice and flat uh they're durable i've never really had one break um and uh they're pick and placeable which of course you know just for me manufacturability is worth it like yes it's it's going to be much more expensive than a piezo it's like two or three times more expensive than a piezo however i like that it's pick and placeable and that i can play little sound effects on it that sounds a little bit better than a um, piezo element speaker so uh that's why this is the great search item the cmt 7525 so 75 7.5 by 7.5 millimeter and i think 2.5 millimeters tall um as seen on many of our most favorite products all right with that is a great search where in the world is